This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So, are you all excited, all ready and raring to go, looking at an example with deferred tax? Hope so. Let's see how we get on. So, the key thing is that this example is exactly the same as the previous example that we saw. Uh, so, calculating the profits after tax. But the key bit now is that we are including deferred tax within our computations. And hopefully that will address the issues that we identified earlier. So what we need to go through and do uh, is to look at our profit after tax for the year. Uh, this is what we have currently from the earlier example. Accounting profits of 2 million each year. The current tax, 100, 500 and 520. OK, that's what we've estimated and that's what we have as our expense currently. And that's what will be as the tax payable balance on the statement of financial position. We need to go through, however, and work out deferred tax. We've already said that there are four steps to follow on deferred tax. Looking at the temporary difference, applying the tax rate to the temporary difference, working out whether or not you have there a deferred tax asset or liability depending upon whether the carrying value is greater than or less than the tax base. Uh, so again, this is the working that we had earlier. Remember, nothing has changed apart from the inclusion of deferred tax. So we can work out the carrying value quite simply, can't we? We bought it for 5 million and each year is depreciated by 1 million. So the carrying value reduces each year by the 1 million. So in the first year, have a carrying value of four, then three, then two, then one, and then then zero. Okay, because there was no residual value. Uh, tax allowances we've worked out those already based upon the fifty percent allowance in the first year, and then twenty percent reducing balance therein. Just note, we said that we compare the carrying value to the tax base, and the tax base is what the tax authorities would record on their own statement of financial position if they were to prepare a tax statement of financial position. So they've got cost less the accumulated tax allowances. So you can see there that our tax bases are 2,500, 2,000 and 1,600. Okay, magic. So what I can do now is I can start to plug in the numbers. And I'm just going to do it year by year, one by one, so that you can fully understand what is happening. So in the first year, we bought it for five, depreciated it by one, carrying value four. Tax base, 2,500. Difference between the two, 1,500. Working out the difference is easy. Working out the carrying value and tax base is a little bit more of a challenge, isn't it? The tax rate, I think, is 20%. So we apply 20% to the temporary difference, which gives me 300. Uh, and then that's the amount that we're going to recognise in the financial statements within our statement of financial position. But is it an asset or is it a liability? It all depends on the value of the carrying value compared to the tax base. Well, here we have a deferred tax liability. Why? because the carrying value is greater than the tax base. So we have a taxable temporary difference. OK, so within my statement of financial position at the end of X5, within my non-current liability, you will have a value of the third tax of 300. But that's getting the position statement right. What about the performance? Well, the performance comes from looking at the movement in position, doesn't it? So we've got a closing deferred tax liability of 300 and opening deferred tax liability of zero because there was no asset at the very start of the year, was there? The movement is that 300 and that 300 is an increase in the liability, isn't it? If we have an increase in the liability, that's an increase in the expense. So I credit my liability debit my expense, effectively taking it from zero up to the 300. OK, happy with that? Lots of steps, 
complicated. But there we go. So if we put that deferred tax movement in on top of my current tax, add them together, you get 400. So the 400 is what we would show in your financial statements. And then the analysis would be within the notes. Looking at that, that now gives you your profit for the year of 1,600, doesn't it? Uh, what about 20x6? Same process, same step-by-step -step methodology. So in 20x6, the carrying value is 3 because we've depreciated it by another 1 million. The tax base from our computations were 2,000. Temporary difference of 1. 20% of the 1,000 is 200. That's what's going to appear on the statement of financial position as deferred tax. But is it an asset or is it a liability? Yeah, correct. It's a liability, isn't it? Why? Uh, because the carrying value is still greater than that tax base. Okay. So the liability is now 200. So just put that on the statement of financial position for this year. Be careful because in step four, the movement goes to profit or loss. So our closing liability was 200. Our opening was 300. This is where you need to be careful. Because what's happened here is that there has been a reduction in that deferred tax liability, hasn't there? That reduction is 100. Okay, don't start putting brackets in to show it as a reduction. No, 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 no. Think like an accountant. There's a reduction in the liability. A reduction in the liability is the reduction in an expense, isn't it? Okay, so it's like a little bit of income. Okay, but we're treating it as a reduction in the expense. So that reduction in the expense. The expense was originally 500. It's being reduced by 100 to give us a tax expense of 400. Wow. And a profit for the year of 1600. It's clever, isn't it? OK. This deferred tax seems to be solving our problem, doesn't it? Whereby we have a constant performance across the three years. And our profit for the year is now not being distorted by the tax charge okay uh if we go through and finish it off triumphantly with 20x7 i can sense your excitement uh the carrying value is 2000 so again it's been reduced by another one the tax base was 1600 you're doing it yourself you don't even need me to do it you're like chris get on with it i've finished uh the temporary difference is 400 20 percent of 400 is 80 and yes it's a deferred tax liability, a taxable temporary difference. Carrying value greater than tax base. Then step four, that's where you really need to switch on. Uh, the liability is now 80. It was 200. It's a reduction, is it there, of 120. And a reduction in a liability is there as a reduction in your expense. Okay, there we go. Does it work? Fingers crossed. Uh, you've got an expense of 520. We reduce it by 120. Spot the excitement. And it's there as 1,600. Isn't that magic? Okay. Uh, so the profit for the year is 1,600. And my profits for the year, my earnings are not distorted by the tax rules. Also, what we can see is we've applied the matching concept in a much better fashion. We've got the benefit of a 1,000 depreciation expense. Because if you take those profits of two, if you were to apply 20% to the profits of two, what do you get? 400. And that's the expense there, isn't it? So yeah, we are basing our tax expense on the depreciation expense. Okay, so it irons out any accounting mismatches that we may have okay which is magic isn't it okay obviously gets way more complicated in the real world because there's loads of different uh assets that will be subject to deferred tax likewise liabilities subject to deferred tax but we'll save that for, for later subjects likewise as well the profits before tax won't be the same every single year but you can be safe in the knowledge that if they are changing Deferred tax will ensure that the earnings figure is reflective of 
the changes in the accounting profits. So everybody's happy. Just to finish off, uh, we're focused on the performance statements. What about the position statements? Well, you've got your deferred tax for your non-current liabilities. And then in current liabilities, you've got your tax payable. So remember, the tax payable is the estimate that we calculated way back in that first example without deferred tax. 100, 500 and 520. So even though we've accounted for deferred tax, that number doesn't change. And remember, that's the easy number within the exam. You won't have to calculate it. It will be given to you. We then put in the deferred tax liability. So here it was 300 and then it steadily decreased over the intervening years. So 200 and then down, is it there to 80? So even though the requirement wanted us to focus on the earnings, the profit for the year, I've thrown that in there from a published company account perspective in that you need to be able to look at the expense in the statement of profit or loss. So looking at the estimate of tax for the year, adjusting for any under or over provision from the prior year and the movement on deferred tax. So there's three things that go in there. The movement on deferred tax is hard. The bits to do with the estimate and the under or over provision should be pretty straightforward. And then on the statement of financial position, put in the payable balance because that should be easy and then have a play around with the deferred tax. And the deferred tax balance on the SFP is what comes from step two and step three. What goes into profit or loss is step four. Okay, there we go. Now, there are two more examples on deferred tax. Uh, I would recommend that you have a go at the first one uh, and see how you get on with it. Have a look at the answer. If you're struggling, watch the next video. If you get it perfectly right, you don't even need to watch the next video, do we? However, there's then an example at the end that looks at the revaluation of PPE and the impact on deferred tax. And I think that will be an important one to go through and look at together. So I'll see you at some point soon.